the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail welcomes you. Join with Senior Pastor Dr. Mike Whitson as we present Decision for Life. Welcome to First Baptist Church Indian Trail. Today I want to really dig into something a little bit different and maybe in a little different fashion, different manner. And uh, hopefully we will go away from today having a much better understanding of the subject. We started a series a couple of weeks ago on the privileges of believers. Uh, we talked about the privilege of salvation and what a marvelous thing it is for God to save us. And then last Sunday we looked at um, the privilege of staying saved, eternal security. And today I want to talk to you about the privilege of the Holy Spirit. If you'll hang in here with me for a week or two, we're going to be looking at the privilege of prayer. And then um, I, want, I want to finish up, though, with uh, the subject of the privilege of the blessed hope that you don't want to miss that Sunday. I hope that you'll come and be with us. Have you ever just thought about what a privilege it is to Know the Holy Spirit as a believer. Do you know, the fact of the matter is, uh, you and I would not have salvation at all if it wasn't for the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, that unless you are born again of the Spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matter of fact, you wouldn't even have life. If you get into the book of Genesis, you discover that the Spirit of God moved uh, over the nothingness and begin to form and to fashion our world as we know it. God looked, uh, matter of fact, we wouldn't, wouldn't even have life itself. Uh, God said, let us make man in our image. And he's talking about the triune God himself in active involvement uh, in the making of man. So without the Holy Spirit, uh, we wouldn't even be here. We would not have life. I've heard it said many times before, I would just love to uh, live in the time of Jesus. I, I would have loved to have been in Jerusalem when he performed so many miracles. I, I'd love to be out on the Sea of Galilee and watch him as he would calm the waves and still the storm. I, I'd love to see him perform all of those miracles that he did. Well, the fact of the matter is Jesus himself said, it is profitable for you that I go away. For if I don't go away, then the Holy Spirit can't come. And what he was saying, he says, I'm not going to leave you spiritually. I'm going to leave you physically because I can only be here in one place at one time. But the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the one that is called alongside of us, you know, it, it's wonderful. Here's the deal. Even if Jesus were here today, like he was in those days, you know, there's probably going to be somewhere across the board today, across the ministry of First Baptist, about 3,000 people. And, and if you wanted time with Jesus, you may or may not get it. But the fact is, the Holy Spirit can be with us all at any place, at any time, for whatever reason. And so he was not talking about uh, physical. He's talking about here, uh, not talking about the spiritual. He's talking about the physical, that he could only be there in one place in one time. So you got to figure out somewhere along the way that the Holy Spirit of God is God's gift uh, to our life, that we can know him. Now, here's a major problem. Satan knows if we get hungry enough, We'll eat any kind of bread. As a matter of fact, we'll eat bad bread. It's really a good descriptive of where we are in our culture and where we are today uh, in the spiritual world of things. Uh, people get so hungry they just would eat any kind of bread and so they give in to these things like barking dogs in the movement or the laughter movement or the movement of where people would just stretch out on the floor and they would appear as if they were glued to the floor and, and couldn't even move. People will eat any kind of bread, even bad bread, when they get 
hungry enough. But let me just say to you this morning, the Holy Spirit is the God of the universe. There are 300 references in the Word of God about the Holy Spirit, but I dare say that the doctrine of the Holy Spirit is, if not the, it is one of the most misunderstood doctrines in all of the Bible. So let me just say, first of all, he is not a power. He is not an it. He is not an influence. He has a will to act. He has feelings to feel. He doesn't have a body that is encased, that he's encased in like you and I are encased in. And the fact that he can sense grief and the fact that he can be lied to lets you know immediately that he's not a power and he's not an influence. He's a person. He is the third person uh, in the Godhead. He is God. And, and many people, many people, many people don't understand that. They have the idea somehow that it's God the Father up here and then it's God the Son down here and then somewhere along the way in that hierarchical thing uh, there is God the Holy Spirit. But they are one according to the teachings of the Word of God. The Bible teaches that it is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, if you try to get your head wrapped around that, I suspect you're going to wind up underneath your bed trying to quote the Greek alphabet frontwards and backwards. But the Bible teaches it. God says it. And that settles it. Uh, so, so let me just say, somebody made this comment, and I, I believe it's really kind of a good description, is that the Father God oversees the work. God the Son delivered the work on the cross. And God the Holy Spirit implements the work in the life of every believer. I love what John the Baptist said in the third chapter of John and the 34th verse. He says that God gives his spirit without measure. Now, isn't that just the way God does things? As a matter of fact, he says that uh, he will give things to us lavishly. He, he goes overboard beyond what you and I could ever think. He says, I will give it to you abundantly. Uh, beyond what you can think or even conjure up uh, in your mind. It, it's like a dam that has been let loose in our life. But the problem is you and I as believers have really never learned how to tap into that resource in the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I did a little research, did a lot of research in getting ready for today, and I found out that there are 50 ministries of the Holy Spirit. 36 of his ministries are done with us personally. That's exciting because it really connects us as believers to the source of who we really are. This morning we came in this morning and it was great. We sing about the Holy Spirit. We sing about the Father. We sing about the Son. But the fact of the matter is, folks, we're singing about the one living triune God. I want to be a little different today. Uh, I, I want to leave you <clears throat> with an understanding maybe of the Holy Spirit that's more unique than what you have uh, maybe heard sometime in your spiritual journey. A few years ago, Time Magazine posted uh, the top 10 most influential, powerful men in the world. And if you look at their life, you discover that they, there were seven of them that had something in common. They were all CEOs uh, of their company. So I, I want to just tap into that for just a minute. And I want to share with you how that, that's indicative of the role of the Holy Spirit in our life. He is the CEO. He is the chief executive officer of every believer's life. Turn in your Bible to Romans chapter 8, and I want you to see verse number 10. Romans chapter 8, and uh, uh, look with me if you will. I said 10, but look at verse 2. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. He says, For the law of the Spirit of Christ Jesus hath made me free from, 
from the law of sin and death. The day that you turn away from sin and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, sin's curse that damned you uh, was taken away and you came under a new leadership, the leadership of the Spirit of God that doesn't bring you damnation, but it brings you life. And that new leadership is the presence of the Holy Spirit and he becomes the CEO. In other words, he is not just resident in your heart and your life. He is president in your heart and your life. He doesn't just reside in your heart and life. He presides uh, in your heart and your life. Now, as a CEO, the Holy Spirit does three things in the life of every believer. And, and, and I'm praying with all of my heart that God will use me this morning to communicate this message in a fashion that would eliminate a lot of confusion that is out there uh, on the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. First of all, here's what he does. He immerses us in the body of Christ. Have you ever heard the term baptism of the Holy Spirit? Shake your head like that, Pastor. I've heard that term, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Look with me, if you will, at 1 Corinthians 12. Just going toward uh, Revelation from where you are. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want you to see verse 13. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. For by one spirit, I'll give you time to get there. I'll, I hear your pages turning, so I'll give you just a minute. 12, 13. For by one what? Spirit, we are all baptized into what? One body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Now, that, that is an amazing verse. So we're talking here about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When does that occur? It occurs the very moment that you turn away from a life of sin, place your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that God then baptizes us by his Holy Spirit and immerses us into one body. Now there's a lot of confusion here about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and a lot of people, they want to jump on Acts chapter 2 when the disciples were in the upper room and the Holy Spirit filled them and they began to speak in tongues and they relate speaking in tongues as... Uh, indicative of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, and it is not. You know, there, there's only one time that the baptism of the Holy Spirit occurs, and that is at the point of salvation. It is when one receives Jesus Christ as Lord uh, and as Savior. Now, what does that do for us? It meets the need of belonging. Uh, hear me a minute. God initiates it. God incorporates us into one body, the body of Jesus Christ. At the very moment of salvation, you become a new creation into a new body, baptized, baptized unto Christ, buried with Christ, like we saw a few minutes ago, buried with Christ and raised, as Romans 6 says, to walk in newness of life. You are now part of the body of Christ. You have a new family. Now, some people call this the second blessing. Now, I want to give you my definition of the second blessing. Y'all listening to me? Look here, look here. You listening to me? Here's the, def here's the definition of the second blessing. It's understanding the first blessing. It's understanding what you got when you got Jesus. It's understanding who you become when you are born again. As, as a kid, I, I grew up being taught and led to believe that it was something that I had to do. It was something that I had to initiate. It was something that I had to incorporate. It was something that I had to perform. But after I got saved, I began to study and the truth of the word of God began to evolve out of the scriptures and I discovered something. There is nowhere in the word of Almighty God any command that you are to be baptized in the spirit of God. 
It's not something you can do. It is something that the Holy Spirit does for us. Now, now the second thing uh, that the Holy Spirit does for us, not only does He immerse us into the body of Christ, He indwells you. Have you ever just thought about that? Have you ever thought about the fact that once once you receive Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that the Holy Spirit of God takes up residence in your heart and in your life? Now, I'll be honest with you. I've tried my best to figure out why in the world that the Holy Spirit would want to live in me. Now, I could understand why that he would want to live in you. I understand why he would want to come. I thought about Miss Macy Hardis this morning. Uh, Many of you know her if you've been here a long time. Oh, I I could really understand why the Lord wanted to live in her heart. Uh, Miss uh, Delphi Simpson. Oh, my word. She used to, about every Sunday, she'd give me a piece of chewing gum and a dollar bill. It was, it was so fun. And, and, and she just was so in love with Jesus. I'd understand. This past week, uh, I, I drove up to Greensboro. There's a 98-year-old man, and he's dying. And uh, his mind is just was sharp as it could be. And uh, I went and visited with him, and he was telling me about some of the World War II stuff that he, uh, World War I stuff uh, that he went through and, and, and a lot of that other the wars. And uh, he, he was on a ship and told me all about that, showed me a picture of the ship that he was on. <clears throat> I got ready to leave. And I said, uh, what can I pray for you about? And without hesitation, he looked at me in the eyes and he, and he said, Pray that I'll have a sweet spirit while I'm going through this. Pray that my attitude would be pleasing to God. Boy, I understand why the Holy Spirit would want to live in a guy like that. Never have understood why he'd want to live in me. But I do understand why he'd want to live in somebody like that. 1 Corinthians 6 says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. I I love the fact that the Lord says, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send a paraclete to come. And here's what he said in Acts 2. He says, to dwell in you, to live in you. So it's very personal. I shared with you last week, it's very personal permanent. The Holy Spirit doesn't come and in and out and in and out. I, I, the wonderful passage in Ephesians 1 we looked at last Sunday, Ephesians 1 13, the Bible says that it's the Holy Spirit of God that seals us to the day of redemption and you say well we can get, get, we can get unsealed well in order to get unsealed you got to be stronger than the one that sealed you. Who sealed you? The Spirit of God seals you. And if you're stronger than the Spirit of God, then maybe you could go unseal yourself. But there's none more powerful than God and you're never going to unseal yourself. It's a permanent deal when the Holy Spirit comes inside you. And then it's powerful. I shared with you a moment ago that the Holy Spirit is not a power and influence, but I want to tell you, He is personally powerful. And He lives in your heart and your life and He's ready to flow through you Here's, here's the deal you've heard me say for 36 years. When the Holy Spirit came into you, you got all of him that you're ever going to get. The problem is he doesn't get all of us. And when we, we, we give him bits and pieces of our life, and when he comes in and we get all of him and he gets bits and pieces of us, then that's where the rub really begins. That, that's where the grease really hits the squeak. You, you understand that when you are baptized... By the Spirit of God, he brings to you a sense of belonging. And then secondly, when he indwells us, he gives us a sense of security. Who in the world doesn't want to belong? Who doesn't want to be connected? And how many people could you name that do do not want to be secure? So we, we got this indwelling, immersing of the Holy Spirit. Third, The Holy Spirit instructs us. How many of you are sitting here today, get to a point in your life oftentimes, you don't know which way to go, which way to turn, what to say, what to do, what's coming next? Have you ever been, Ben, I get that way. This is something wonderful because 
the Lord Jesus says the Holy Spirit will come and he will guide us into all truth. T turn in your Bible to 1 Corinthians, back a page or two from where you are. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I want you to see verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. That we, here are the results. That we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. Wow. Isn't that a powerful promise? A powerful presentation. You say, well, preacher, I've never been guided like that before. Well, if you've never been guided like that before, there are one or two problems. Number one is that you've never known Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Therefore, his spirit does not live in you to guide you. Or second, you've really never learned how to listen to his guiding in your heart and in your life. And rely on the fact that he can teach you. Uh, let, let me just quickly add at this point. Because you are a believer in Christ. And because the Holy Spirit lives in you. You don't need a PhD in theology to teach you anything. You, you got the Holy Spirit of God. And, and John 14, 26 says he will bring to your remembrance Everything. So, so, so God is teaching you. And the word says that he will remind you of those teachings. In John 16, he says he will guide us into all truth. Hey, do you remember what uh, the Lord Jesus said to the seven churches of Asia Minor? You, you said, said the same thing to every one of them. He said this. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. Did he not say that? Say amen if he did. Yes, he did that. He is speaking, he's teaching, he's instructing, and the problem is sometimes we just don't listen. You say, well, okay. How do I listen? You ready? Well, this is phenomenal. It's going to blow you away. Through the word of God. It's as simple as that. There's something so very interesting to me. Uh, do, do you know in Ephesians chapter 5, when the Bible says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be what? Filled with the Spirit. And then he gives this long list of things that happen after you are filled with the Spirit. In other words, he tells you how it affects your role as a husband. He tells you how it affects your role as a wife and as a parent and as children, as an employer, as an employee in that long list of things of being filled with the Spirit. Do you know that that same list appears in another passage of Scripture? In Colossians chapter 3. He gives the same list. Here's how to be a good husband, wife, child, employer, employee, but he starts out, initiates in an entirely different way. He didn't say, um, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. He starts in Colossians chapter 3 by saying, let the Word of God indwell you richly. So what he's saying is, the same thing as being filled with the Spirit is allowing the Word of God to live in your heart and your life and saturate you. That's the key of walking in the Spirit. How we know that that is true. How we know that. You say, well, how do you know that's true? You ready for this? Who wrote the Bible? The Holy Spirit inspired the Bible. The Holy Spirit breathed into holy men of old and they wrote it down. He authored the scripture so it'll cause us to know the truth through his word as we walk in obedience to him and fill our hearts and our minds with the word of God. All right, that's part one. Let me, I got about four minutes to give you part two. 
Uh, he's a CEO in that he indwells us. But he's also CEO because he enables us. There are five things uh, that I want to give you before we close today um, that he'll do in your life if you'll just let him. John 14, 16, again, third time I've quoted this, is that he's called alongside you to be your helper. So, so let, me, let, me, let me give you this. First of all, he will enable you to witness effectively. How many of you have uh, been in a situation where you wanted to talk to that person that you're with about Jesus, but you shied away from that opportunity because you got scared? I got both my hands up. Huh? We, we've all, uh, as believers, ha have been there. And, and the issue is we just didn't have the boldness to do it. But the Holy Spirit of God will give you that boldness. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you shall receive power. You will receive boldness after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be witnesses unto me. It didn't say you might be if you overcome your shyness or you could be if you could just put away the fear. He says you will be. Do you remember Simon Peter? When he just was with one little old girl at a bonfire and he was so scared that he wouldn't even tell that little girl that he belonged to Jesus. Oh, but after the Holy Spirit filled him up, he stood before the very ones who had nailed Jesus to the cross and he preached the word of God with boldness. 3,000 of them got saved during that one sermon. What was the difference? The boldness of being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And so that's the way that we ought to be. Hey, Jay, I'm, I'm thinking about getting me a new T-shirt. I'm thinking really seriously about getting me a new T-shirt and, and I'm going to wear it proudly. And it says, I have overcome anorexia. I, I, I'm really thinking about doing that. But, we, but that's the way we ought to be. We ought to be proud. We ought to be excited. And, 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 and we ought to be like Simon Peter and filled with the Spirit of God and letting the Word of God dwell in us richly. All right, number two, he enables us to worship correctly. I, I'm, I'm going to preach on this uh, sometime soon down the road. Um, but we, you know, we came into the house of the Lord this morning and, and we automatically started singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. And boy, I tell you, I got the focusing in on the name of Jesus. And I was able to worship. And, and, and then there were other, there were other songs that, uh, that, that, that really lifted up the name of Jesus. And we sing about uh, the Holy Spirit. We sing about God the Father. We sing about uh, God the Son. And it's all singing. And, and we just worship the Lord. Here, here's what I've come to really believe with all of my heart. L look with me at Philippians chapter 3 or just listen. At, at chapter, in verse number 3 he says, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. What a powerful, powerful word that, that is. We worship in the spirit. Okay, if you don't hear anything about this other than this, I want you to hear this. You ready? L listen to this. Our private worship has everything in the world to do with our corporate worship. And when our private worship Monday through Saturday is anemic, I I'm just telling you with all of my heart that when you come to the house of God on Sunday morning and you've had an anemic time with the Lord Monday through Saturday, your worship on Sunday is going to be pathetic. You're not going to get it here. It ought to be the overflow of what you've been experiencing with God all week long. All right, let me give you number three. He enables us to work confidently, to work confidently. Hear, hear my heart a minute. When the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and your life, he then along with himself brings you at least one spiritual gift that he intends for you to use to get plugged into the body of Christ so that the body of Christ could be more beautiful as a result of you working for the Lord. Today I'm going to be speaking to hundreds and hundreds of people that here's what, here, here's what their idea is, is I'm going to come to Sunday morning and I'm going to get in on the show. 
I'm going to watch the performance. Let me just tell you, that's not New Testament Christianity. New Testament Christianity is being able to identify what that spiritual gift that God has given to you and finding a place within the body of Christ that you can use that spiritual gift for the glory of the Lord. All during the month of September, we'll have out on Main Street uh, all kinds of representations of the ministry of this church that need help. And, and we're going to ask you to identify what's your spiritual gift. And if you're not, being, if you're not plugged in, we're going to ask you to get plugged in. The Holy Spirit enables you to work confidently. I love what Bud Wilkerson said. He said that, uh, given the definition of football, he said uh, football is 22 exhausted players down on the field performing for a stand full of people that are in desperate need of exercise. So let me give you number four. The Holy Spirit enables us to win courageously. You understand, he came in to win it. First Timothy says, fight the good fight of faith. Uh, you, you understand, he comes into your heart and life to win. I, I love what Dabo Sweeney, he, he had last uh, year. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what his, his phrase is going to be for 2019. But last year, he instilled the, the, the slogan of leave no doubt. Leave no doubt. And that's the way it ought to be with us. We're in this thing to win it. Now, the Holy Spirit of God, when he takes up residence in you, it's like that metal detector over at the airport and you walk through and, 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 and if you've got something in your pocket that ought not to be in there, what happens? Meek, meek, meek. Or they're going to pull you over. They're going to pat you down. They're going to put that wand down. to make. They're going to find out what it is. That's what the Holy Spirit does. When you get something in your heart and in your life that ought not to be there, the Holy Spirit says, eh, 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 that ought not to get there. He's in this thing to win it. If you're here today and you are a miserable Christian, guess what? The Holy Spirit's miserable in you because our sin grieves let me give you number five and I'll close. He enables us to walk consistently. Galatians 5, 16 says, if you walk in the spirit, you will not carry out the works of the flesh. We're called by God to walk regularly, consistently, and daily filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to finish up with three things. You ready for this? You say, Pastor, I would love, 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 love to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Problem is, I, I leak a lot. How do I stay filled with the Holy Spirit? First of all, is confession. The very minute that you know that you did something, said something, or went somewhere that you knew was displeasing, and by the way, it goes right back, the Holy Spirit's going to say, Nyeh. Don't wait until there's a second eh, or a third or a fourth. Confess it immediately. The second thing I want to encourage you is stay focused on Christ. Don't, don't get your focus of attention on somebody else. Don't get your focus of attention on some circumstance that's going on in your life. Stay focused on Christ. And the third thing, pretty simple, do it every day. Do it every day and you'll walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Would you stand with me please and let's pray together. Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fbcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.